Just back up. Perfect square, 14. Five eight. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Alonzo Reyes, 32, a Latino, runs the family heroin business, wanted in Virginia for a double homicide. Deals high-end, 80-proof junk with a gold star label. All right, now is our problem. What do you got from Statesman's Hospital? One victim's in critical condition, and the little girl's arm is broken in two places. All right, father takes his daughter out skating. Next thing you know, she's in the ER. Debrino, you fired into a crowd of ice skaters? Alonzo got off six shots before I discharged my weapon. I had a clear shot, Chief, and I took it. All right, if he's wounded, that'll slow him down some. We checked all the hospitals. No one's come in with a nine millimeter hole in his leg. Detective Page, what do you got from your junkies? We got two empty gold star glassines, but no leads. Nothing we can hold them on. All right, Debrino, review the tapes of the interrogation. Any names and places mentioned, I want them checked out today. Also, I want a reward posted for information. We're going to have at least 200 junkies camped outside here by noon, making up stories just to get that cash for their next fix. Alonzo Reyes is wanted for double homicide. He is wounded, he is dangerous, and I want him off the streets. Go get him. Jack, you were born to fence. Really think so? I mean, I didn't want to hurt my instructor, but... <laughs> well, let's do it again. <laughs> so, you were saying upstairs that height is really an advantage? Well, how tall are you? 6'4". Well, I mean, that's with the lifts, but uh, I'm actually 5'8". <laughs> <laughs> so the fellow you were beating up on upstairs is a much shorter guy. If you would practice, you would be taller. What do you mean, like that uh, a German girl you defeated in the Olympics for the silver medal? What was she, 6'4"? Frieda Mueller. Yeah. How did you know about her? Because I rented some of the Olympic tapes. I was just doing a little background check, that's all. Yeah. What did you think? Were you disappointed? Viva Cuba. Oh. <laughs> you okay with that stuff? Yeah, fine. Listen, I'm going to go rent Cyrano de Bergerac just so I'm ready for you Wednesday. I'm going to be much better. Don't make any promises you can't keep. Uh, don't worry about that. No, wait a minute. Hold it, hold it. Fine. Hey, stop. Jack, it's okay. Come here. Hey, I'm talking to you. What is your dumbass? You touch that woman again? You're gonna have to answer to me. 
Who the hell are you to tell me about my wife? Please, lady. I don't know anything about that guy Alonzo you're looking for. If I did, I would tell you just to get out of here. I'll go. Yes. Don't waste your time, man. Ain't nothing now. Yeah, shoot a bad guy and I get lumped with this nonsense. Okay, you know, I was doing a little research for this book that I'm writing. How to survive the winters of D.C. This guy right here? Very strange. Oh, you know, I hear that superior tone in your voice, my friend, but I gotta tell you, they don't phase me. But this is other guy. I think we can flip. Wait a second, go, go back. Give me that. So. Is he still here? Could be. They're moving into a shelter on 23rd. What do you think of Whoa! Whoa! Duffy, wait up! Is this it? I thought you had sex. I did. And we had us a mini jailbreak. Two of them just waltzed off the front door on the way to the motor pool. Kidding me, right? Good riddance. They were stinking up the building. Brought you a gift. Hey, thank you. I love gifts. <laughs> Ooh, Pisco. Hope you like it. It's my favorite. It's from Chile. Very nice. Excuse me. Just one second. Joe. Guess I got a meeting to go to. Nice meeting you. Yeah. I'll let you know. I just wanted to thank you for coming to my rescue with Gregor. I he's lucky I didn't have my sword. Dirty Harry. Yeah, well, except Clint Eastwood wouldn't be caught dead in tights. <laughs> My father loved Clint Eastwood. I've seen all his movies. Is he a little guy? Oh, no, don't tell me. Don't tell me. I'm going to break my heart. <laughs> Did you hear from your husband? No. Gregor's not a bad person, Jack. We've lost the ability to talk without... I wanted a divorce for a long time, and he refuses, so now I just... I just want him to stay away. And I took your advice. I got a restraining order. Good. I should go. I have class. You certainly do. You are too charming for your own good. It's going to get you in trouble someday. I hope so. Gunner. His name is Chris Gunner. We've known each other since. It's got to be like 10th grade. He was the one who talked me to go into the academy in the first place. And then for no apparent reason, he just drops out a week before we're supposed to graduate. And you think this guy, Eddie and Chris Gunner, are one and the same? Oh, yeah, it's his voice, the way he talks. So weird, you know? Me, Chris, and Ellen were so close, and he just never explained. He just called up one night and said, that's it, I'm out. Don't phase me. What? He was always saying that, don't phase me. Just something he did. That's rule. Alonzo's calling us. Yeah. yeah. Gave me the wrong Kathy Watson. Is this somebody new? No, it's high school when it got away. Uh, when men do stupid things, there's always a lady involved. Oh, they're doing a high school play, Joe. And Cerno de Bergerac, and she was playing Roxanne, and I wanted to try out for the for the lead. You know, they gave it to this guy, Tommy Fitzpatrick, the guy uh, I mean, he had no talent, and the only reason they gave him the part because he could fence. And I swore one day I am going to take that up. I was driving by Sony's, you know, and they're teaching fencing lessons. I'm going to try that. You know? So I lost 10 pounds. It's a doggone good workout. Uh, Jack, first 10 pounds is water weight. <laughs> Hi, Mavis. Hey, good. How are you doing? How's your family? Now, you give me a hug. Give me a hug. Yeah. <laughs> See ya. All right. Got some of that cornbread? Good okay, man. thank you. A man does not fight for the mere hope of winning. It is better, far better to know that the fight is totally, imperably, incorrigibly in vain. Patton? Ah, Sereno. Oh. Would you mind holding up, sir? Hey, Chief. How you doing? Hello. What is it, Ferris? 
I passed it through. Jack, help me. Help me, please. Sonia, yeah. Jack, it's Gregor. He's here. Sonia, no, wait a minute. Slow down, honey. I can't understand you. I'm at the studio, Jack. All right, keep him outside. Don't open the door. Joe, get a uni to 348 Congress. Sonia, we're on our way, all right? Just calm down. Read it to me. 1.30 p.m., neighbors heard her screams and called 911. First to respond was Officer Arthur Leggett from the 6th. He found the deceased. In a statement to the officer, she admitted killing him in self-defense. So, how do you want to handle it? He calmed down, and he said he just wanted to talk. And as soon as I opened the door, he attacked me. He was drunk. I begged him. I pleaded with him. No, put you in a hotel tonight until we clear the scene. Chief Mannion. Self-defense. Justifiable homicide. You believe her? I had a run-in with him yesterday here in the parking lot. He was getting physical with her, so I had to run him off. You got any witnesses? Yeah, me. There was an old lady with some groceries, a couple of kids playing basketball. His name is Gregor Bukantz, Romanian-American, 43, lives in New Orleans. Did some checking up on him after our little meeting. They were married, been separated about a year. All right, who's taking her in? Jack, she's a murder suspect, whether we like it or not. To the U.S. attorney says otherwise. I'll take her in. Okay. Okay, please step against the wall. The time of death was somewhere between 1.45 and 2 p.m. The sword nicked his jugular. His blood alcohol level was high, but there was nothing in his stomach. We're waiting for the toxicology reports. Uh, the angle of the entry wound, the prints on the sword, the cuts on his hand, it all matches up with her story. I ran Bukantz's name in our news data file base. There was an article in a British newspaper about how he abused his first wife in Romania, but she never filed charges. You got any other witnesses? Yeah, I've run down two of the witnesses the chief mentioned. A woman, 65, Leonetta Godshall, and Osborne Spark, 18, who was playing basketball at the time. And I'm also revisiting the crime scene, canvassing the neighborhoods, and talking to the tenants in her building. And then there's the chief. Tread carefully. I will. Got any advice? Yeah, I'd be very creative. I'll catch him after lunch. Who is it? Kevin Debrino. five years ago, Kevin. After he quit the academy, he got a job at a construction site over by the river. Doing what? Crane operator. Or something like that. Couldn't change a light bulb around here, but hey, if that's what he wanted to do, that was fine with me. He was home more at first. And then he wasn't. His father ID'd the body. He'd been in the water for a few weeks. They used his dental records. I can't believe you didn't hear about it. <sighs> this was a mistake. I, I shouldn't even be here. I'm sorry. 
You selfish bastard. What? You were the best man in our wedding. Why didn't you come to the funeral? Nobody knew him like you. We had a plan, okay? Let's be cops, he said. And a week away from the job, he bails on me. Not a word, nothing. One day we're best friends, the next day. So no, I don't know him. I miss him so much. My wife said he worked at a construction site. I spoke with a foreman. He remembered Chris. He made him out as a cop working undercover. Said he came in once a week to pick up a check. So you think that this drug addict slash cop might be this Eddie character you picked up? All I need is three days clear. I got ten sick days coming. You're chasing Alonzo with Paige. You got no time for a vacation. We tracked him down through his last five girlfriends to a place in the seventh. He wasn't there when we got there, but we are so close, Chief. I can smell him. What's taking you so long? Well, the word's out in the money. We're waiting for him to bite. Look, I figured that Temple could hold down the fort until I took care of this thing. It's going to take me three days, four days max, I swear. No, Debrino. All right, you want to find this guy? You got to do it on your own time. Debrino. Eileen Thornton, DEA. If this guy's undercover, she'll know the particulars. Tell her I said hello and do it on your own time. Uh, before you offer to buy me dinner for not going after Debrino for that reckless shooting at the ice rink, wasn't my idea. Conflict of interest. We're handling the shooting victims against the city. Well, that's not why I asked you to come here. You familiar with the name Sonia Ribeiro? The uh, fencer? The woman accused of killing her husband? Yes. Would you represent her for me? Oh, Jack, that's not what I do. Oh, come on. That's what you did in L.A., you know, before your first husband turned you into a barracuda, and, and, and all of a sudden you started fighting against the people instead of for the people. I can't... You said first husband, applying there might be a second. Let's be clear, that will not happen. Kevin. Vanessa, please, I need somebody to represent her that I can trust. Wow, that, that sounds like a favor. You asking for a favor, that's got to be really important. Bullies. I have zero tolerance for bullies. I don't care whether they're wearing knapsacks or badges or unregistered nine millimeters, especially the ones that beat their spouses and abuse their kids. When I was a kid, my father was my hero. And I used to sit on the windowsill and, and I'd wait for him to come home from work. And I was about eight years old. It was Christmas Eve. And I remember because it was a year I got my Roy Rogers double holster set. <laughs> and my dad came home. He was drunk. He had purchased this very expensive doll for my sister, something we couldn't afford. And my mother made the mistake of questioning that decision. How could he afford to buy this doll when we could barely afford to eat? I remember being in the living room and hearing them in the kitchen. One of the tenants called the cops. They always did. He just kept being there. And there was nothing I could do. My dad, my hero, was a bully. And I couldn't protect my own mom. You were eight years old, Jack. There was nothing you could have done. Yeah. I'm not eight anymore. 
heard pounding on her door when you were on the phone with her? Mm hmm I spoke to the tenants in her building. None of them heard the pounding. No, I know what I heard. Would you have any problem with me getting a copy of the phone call? I understand it was patched through your office and recorded. What? Okay, I ran down those two witnesses you spoke of. They said you grabbed him by the, uh, uh, yeah, let's just say below the belt. I did. Well, with all due respect, sir, they didn't see him come after you. He didn't. He was threatening her. He grabbed her arm. So he only grabbed her arm and you didn't hear their conversation. You were too far away. I could tell by his body language, Nancy. I mean, he was very aggressive. He was invading her space. He threatened the woman. Hmm. Hmm? Chief, do you mind looking through here out into the bullpen? Sure. And if you would, could you pretend for a minute that I am Gregor? Please, j just go with me. Okay, Officer Rublinski, please tell the chief what I said to you. You said you care for me more than anything in this world. We belong together. Don't leave me. Can't you see that I love you? Please, don't yeah. leave me, please. All right, thanks, officer. It's not what I saw. It didn't happen that way. But good demonstration. But one second. Did I have anything to do with you becoming such a good detective? Yeah. It was all your fault. I thought so. You deserve a cookie. <laughs> Why did you call Gregor at the hotel two hours before he was killed? On the same day you filed for a restraining order against him. You don't have to answer that. My client is free on bail. She's here today willingly. She's cooperating. Your line of questioning is insinuating a climate of deception. I know you called him. We have your cell phone records. Oh, what difference would it make? He was my husband. We talked all the time. I'm telling you the truth. Why don't you believe me? Miss Riberia, we're trying to understand your relationship with Gregor. There was a time that I loved my husband very much. Can you understand love? Can you understand what it's like to be afraid? To wake up every morning? And where's Jack? He told me it wouldn't be like this. I think that's enough for now. Okay? It was my life or his. Why can't they understand that? Archie, Archie, take it easy. Look, they're out of me, man. Just, just pull me out, okay? Pull me out. Give me your address. I'll come and get you. God, man, Archie, you're talking to a dead man. Where are you? I'm running. I'm running. Chris! Chris! That was the last conversation I had with him. We traced it to a payphone down by the docks. Six months after we faked his death. At the construction site. It was done to protect his family. He was in a situation where... <clears throat> he found out there was a price out on his son's head. He couldn't live with that. We faked his death to take the curse off of his family. And he never told his wife? We left that entirely up to him. <clears throat> so when he was undercover, was he getting high? In all honesty, I mean, when you were as close as Chris was to the beast, you almost have to. It got worse when he cut himself off from Ellen and his son. We wanted to pull him out. But the bust he gave us, the cases he put together, it was hard to let go. And then the phone call happened. We tried to find him. We looked for him for years. You were a friend of Chris's. Yeah, that's right, a good friend. Well, I'm sorry. This is a cold, thankless business, detective. Is that what it is, Archie? Because you know what it sounds like from over here? It sounds like a desk jockey covering his ass for leaving a good cop out in the street.
if the blade remains still inside the cavity, you bleed, but not as much as you would if the blade gets twisted. It's that little flick of the wrist that does all the damage. So she stabbed her husband and then twisted the blade? <clears throat> Looks that way. So it's possible this wasn't an accident. This might not have been self-defense. So you're saying that Sonia twisted the blade? Yes, sir. Well, the blade could have twisted when her husband fell to the ground, huh? It's possible, but... Yeah, possible. I mean, what? 10% possible, 50% possible, 70% possible? I mean, the man is drunk. He comes in. He's towering above her. He's enraged. In self-defense, she reaches out. She stabs him. He grabs the blade with his hand and twists it as he falls. And yet you're prepared to tell me you're 100% certain she twisted the blade? I can't be certain. No, you can't. I can't. No. I'm going to take out the voices. I just want to hear the pounding. friend, the one the DEA says is dead? Or not. I just got off the phone with him. You sure it was him? Don't phase me. He must have said it about three times. Well, why'd he call you? He wants reward money. He says he can get us a nonzo. Paige. The hell took you so long, man. I've been freezing my ass off up here. <laughs> you picked the spot, though. Chris. Kevin. <sighs> wow. <laughs> okay, what? You guys got the money, huh? What do you got for me? What do I got for you, man? Alonzo Reyes, that's what I got for you. Now show me the money. It don't work like that. What do you mean it don't work like that? Don't tell me how it works. I know how it works. What the hell are you doing, man? A little bit of this, a little bit of that, you know. I'm trying to stay busy. How about yourself? Uh, I spoke to Archie Cryer. He said you were dead. My man Archie, huh? <laughs> well, to him, I am dead. But you know, to other people, I'm not, man. To other people, I'm not here. I'm working the point, baby. I'm running the streets. Oh, that is. Actually, I don't. Maybe you should tell me. That stuff is way over Archie's head, man. I was deep, Kevin. I was deep undercover, just like I am now. Chris, do you think we're stupid? There's just some things you could know. But there's other things, man. There's other things that if you knew, I'd have to kill you. And <laughs> you think we're really gonna buy All right, this just garbage. call me Eddie, man. Oh. All right, just call me Eddie. All right, there's no flush at the end of this for me, all right? But I don't always look like this. Ah. Uh, Cut the crap, Chris. You're doing this for the price of a fix. It's not right. Yes, you oh. are. How do we get to Alonzo? That's what I want to know. You don't, man. <laughs> the guy's like Osama. <laughs> he never sleeps in the same place more than one night. All right, OK. Tell him we can move some weight. Man, he's got more than he needs to move. So what does he want? He wants him. He wants you, man. He's obsessed with you. He wants the cop that shot him. That's right. You know that picture from the paper of you in the ice rink? He's got that, man. He looks at that thing all the time. He wants to kill a cop. If I can tell him that you're going to be there, he'll show. Why would he believe you? Because he trusts me, man. He thinks I'm a lawyer. All right, OK. <laughs> can we have a minute? Come here. Every word out of his mouth is smack. What makes you think he's going to deliver Alonzo? Come on, the guy's a junkie. He's going to take the money and he's going to shoot it up his arm. I say we get him off the street right now. Let's give him one more chance, man. If he screws up, we'll go back out. We'll grab him back in. This is our best uh, chance. Man, do you guys want me to deliver him or what? I don't need this grief. All right, man, hold on, hold on. And I'll give you $200 now, all right? $300 later, you deliver Alonzo. 
You cheap bastards. Give me the money. Give it to me, man. <laughs> all right, so how are we going to do this? You guys set up a decoy unit, all right? You just tell me when and where you want him, and I'll drop him in your laps. One more night isn't going to kill him. So you let him go out there, get us to Alonzo. Then you can go help your friend. This one? Yeah, I got it. Chris! Chris! Oh. Oh. It's a different Jack Mannion tonight. Where did you learn that move? Well, I was watching those Olympic tapes. You know, they got such great coverage. You can look at it from five different angles. And there was something very interesting, Sonia. You have this odd habit of twisting your wrist when you score, it's kind of like a basketball player when he follows through. It's my style. Exactly. I love the way you think, Jack Mannion. You know, I think that's why you and I have such a, a connection. Yeah. Did you know Gregor was engaged? Yeah, I found a receipt for the ring in his wallet. What does that have to do with me? Well, it seems just about everything. You see, I went and talked to his fiancée. She said that he was coming over here to get you to sign the divorce papers, and then I remembered what... You said you wanted a divorce, too, right? I mean, usually when two people agree on something, it usually happens unless one of them is lying. What are you saying, Jack? He didn't want to get deported. You get divorced from Gregor, they're going to kick you out of the country, right? But they don't deport widows. I think you should leave. You are so clever. You know what the real stroke of genius was? You got me involved in the phone conversation. The poundy, poundy, poundy thing. Yeah. That was brilliant. Then I remembered. It hasn't left me. The old memory. I saw the tape here. Play Misty for me, right? I saw it. I know I did. And there's that great scene in the movie where she's pounding on the door, trying to wake him up, pounding, 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 pounding. I bet you if I put the tape in the VCR right now, it's cued to that very spot. Am I right? I'm not going back to Cuba. You're under arrest for the murder of Gregor Bacantz. You're embarrassing me. Damn. I love that luck. Half my callers are guys like you tripping on their own pants. Wouldn't surprise me if it was a cop who invented that trend. <sighs> How you doing, Kevin? <clears throat> you look good. Yeah, I've been better. You don't call anymore. What's up with that? I got busy. You got a needle in there? 
Rudy, you won't want an old uh, debris on Frankie's hey, finger now, would you? Hey, man. You holding? I didn't do it. I knew you did. You do? Sure, I couldn't have been here. Listen, I need some help. Well, I'm here to fight. Where can I score some gold star? Shoot, Gary. Fifth and Elliot. Get yourself a belt before you kill yourself, all right? Have you got any gold star? Oh, yeah, check me out. It's cool. No, it's just my kid, man. Yeah. That's 40, okay? Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Go. Cool. Later, man. You know, I've never ratted anybody out before. I mean, it's not really my style, but you know that, right, Kev? You know, so as soon as they pull me off this case, I'm gonna kick oh, off. Oh, Chris, Kevin. stop lying to yourself. You're not a cop anymore. You're not Eddie London. You're Chris Gunner. Yeah. yeah. And you're a junkie. Plain and simple. You're a junkie. You make me sick. You know, I knew the chances of you going through that door were pretty slim. But I had to try something before I found you face down in your own vomit somewhere dying. Yeah, it's easy for you to say. Yeah. You ungrateful bastard! Do you have any idea what I've been through this week for you, huh? Huh? You, you don't know where I've been. You don't know what it's like. You, you know who I saw this week? Ellen. I saw Ellen and I saw your son. That's right, Chris. He has your eyes, buddy. <laughs> you know, I saw my kid hit his first home run. How many fathers could say that, oh, huh? Big deal. Did he even know you were there? Did he even know you were there, Chris? No. No. I don't think so. Do me a favor. Just stop caring so much, all right? Look, Chris, it's your choice. You can go in or you can walk away. Whatever you want.
turned her defense over to one of my associates. Uh-huh. Do you like onions? I forget. No, no. Really? <laughs> yeah, really. Okay. How about cheese? You like cheese? I love it. It's delicious. Oh, isn't this nice? Excellent. A toast? Oh. To your beauty. Ah, oh, thank you. That's it. So, tell me something, Vanessa. Were you serious when you said uh, you were not going to have another husband? Why? Are you proposing? No. Just curious. So, have you given up fencing? I decided to go back to my original passion, what I'm good at, what I know the best. Mm, and that is? The dance of love. Mm, the dance of love. <laughs> the tango. Oh. oh. <laughs> they only cost $15 an hour. Police in Washington, D.C. is no easy task. The District, Omnibus tomorrow on CBS Action. Everybody really is kung fu fighting here on CBS Action. Peter goes deep cover at a martial arts tournament to save a little girl. The legendary David Carradine stars in Kung Fu, The Legend Continues next. <laughs>